Hello, my name is Mary Bear Shannon. I'm a reference librarian at the Haverford Township Free Library, and here is today's Wine and Words Wednesdays. Um, so the weather is lovely out. Uh, everything seems to be in bloom. It is by far one of my favorite part seasons of the year is late spring uh, when everything is blooming. Uh, it helps that I am not as allergic as people like my husband who spends the entire season sneezing. Um, but the other thing that I uh, have realized um, getting ready for today is that uh, many of our greatest poets wrote odes and poems about May. And so here is a sampling of some of the poems uh, about the month of May. So my first poem is The Young May Moon by Thomas More. The young May moon is beaming, love. The glow worm's lamp is gleaming, love. How sweet to rove through, mo through Morna's grove when the drowsy world is dreaming, love. Then awake, the heavens look bright, my dear. Tis never too late for delight, my dear, and the best of all ways to lengthen our days is to steal a few hours from the night, my dear. Now all the world is sleeping, love, but the sage his star watching, keeping love, and I whose star, more glorious far, is the eye from that casement peeping, love, and I whose star, more glorious far, is the eye from that casement peeping love. Then awake till I rise, till rise of sun, my dear, the sage's glass will shun, my dear. Or in watching the flight of bodies of light, he might happen to take three for one, my dear. So again, welcome to Wine and Words Wednesday. My name is Mary Bear Shannon. I uh, am a librarian at the Haverford Township Free Library. And my next poem about May is by James Joyce. And this is entitled Winds of May. Winds of May that dance on the sea, dancing a ring around in glee, from furrow to furrow, while overhead the foam flies up in the gar garland garlanded in silvery arches spanning the air saw you my true love anywhere well a day well a day for the winds of may love is unhappy when love is away and so my next poem as we are celebrating uh may poetry uh, poems that ha are written about May. Another famous poet, poetess, or poet, um, is Emily Dickinson, and here is her poem, May Flower. Pink, small, and punctual, aromatic, low, covert in April, candid in May, dear to the moss, known by the knoll, Next to the robin, in every human soul, bold little beauty, bedecked with the nature forswears antiquity. And that was by Emily Dickinson. And then another poem, again, this is a Wine and Words Wednesday. Uh, we're celebrating May poetry, uh, since it is so lovely outside and it seems to have inspired so many poets my next poem is by Stephen Vincent Benet, and this is May Morning. I lie stretched out upon the window seat, and doze and read a page or two and doze, and feel the air like water on me close, great waves of sunny air that lip and beat, with a small noise monotonous and sweet, against the window and the scent of cool frail flowers by some brown and dew-drenched pool possesses me from drow drowsy head to feet this is the time of all suffering laughter 
at idiotic things some one has done, and there is neither past nor vague hereafter, and all your body stretches in the sun and drinks the light in like a liquid thing filled with the divine languor, languor of late spring. That was by Stephen Vincent Benet. That was called May Morning. So moving forward in terms of poems that I can read about May, um, this is by William Wordsworth, and this is To May. Though many suns have risen and set, since thou blithe May wert born, and bards who hailed thee may forget, thy gift, thy beauty scorn, there are, there are who to a birthday strain confide not harp and voice, but evermore throughout thy reign are grateful and rejoice. Delicious odor, music sweet, too sweet to pass away. Oh, for a deathless song to meet the soul's desire allay that when a thousand years year are told should praise the genial power through summer heat and autumn cold and winter's drearest hour earth see thy presence feel nor less if yon ethereal blue with its soft smile the truth express the heavens have felt it too the inmost heart of man uh, if glad, partakes a livelier cheer, an eye that cannot but be sad, let fall a brightened tear, since thy return, through days and weeks of hope that grew thy stealth, how many wan and faded cheeks have kindled into health, kindled into health, the, the old by thee revived have said, Another year is ours, and wayworn wanderers, poorly fed, have smiled upon thy flowers, who tripping lisps of merry song amid his playful peers, the tender infant who, ha who was long a prisoner of fond fears. But now, when every sharp-edged blast is quiet in its sheath, his mother leaves him free to taste, earth's sweetness in thy breath. Thy help is with the weed that creeps along the humblest ground. No cliff so rare, no cliff so bare, but on its steeps thy favors may be found. But most of one, most of some peculiar nook that our own hands have dressed, thou and thy train have proud to, proud, are proud to look and seem to love it best. And yet how pleased we wander forth when May is whispering, come. Choose from the bowers of virgin earth the happiest for your home. Heaven's bounteous love through me is spread from sunshine, clouds, winds, waves, drops on the moldering turret's head and on your turf-clad graves. Such greeting heard away with sighs for lilies that must fade, or the wrath primrose as it dies, forsaken in the shade. Vernal fruitions and desires are linked in endless chase, while, while as one kindly growth retires, another takes its place. And what if thou, sweet May, has known mishap by worm and blight, if expectations newly blown have perished in thy, in thy sight, if love and joys, while up they sprung, were caught as if as in a snare, such is the lot of all the young, however bright and fair. Lo, streams that April could not check are patient of thy rule, gurgling in foamy water break, loitering in glassy pool. By thee, thee only could be sent, such gentle mists as glide, curling with confirmed intent on the green mountain's side. How delicate the leafy veil 
though which you which yon house of god gleams mid the presence of this deep dale by few but shepherds trod and lowly huts near beaten ways no sooner stand attired in thy fresh wreaths than they for praise peep forth and are admired season of fancy and of hope permit not for one hour a blossom from thy crown to drop nor add it to a flower keep lovely may as if by touch of self-restraining art this modest charm of not too much part seen imagined part and my next poem about may is by william watson and this is ode in may let me go forth and share the overflowing sun with one wise friend or one better than wise being fair where the pewit wields and dips on heights of bracken and ling and earth unto her her leaflet tips tingles with the spring what is so sweet and dear as a prosperous morn in may the confident prime of the day and the dauntless youth of the year when nothing that asks for bliss asking a right is denied and half of the world and half uh, when nothing that asks for bliss asking a right is denied and half of the world a bridegroom is and half of the world a bride the song of mingling flows grave ceremonial pure as one from lips that endure the cosmic discant rose when the temporal lord of life going his golden way had taken a wondrous maid to wife that long had said him away said him nay for of the for of old the son our sire came wooing the mother of men earth that was virginal then vestral fire to his fire silent her bosom and coy but the strong god sued and pressed and born of their starry nuptial starry nuptial joy are all the drink of the breast and the triumph of him that begot and the travail of her that bore behold they are evermore as warp and wealth weft in our lot we are children of splendor and flame of shuddering also and tears magnificent out of the dust we came and abject from the spheres o bright irres irresistible lord we are fruit of earth's womb each one and fruit of thy loins o son whence first was the seed outpoured to thee as our father we bow forbidden thy father to see who is older and greater than thou as thou art greater and older than we thou art but as word of his speech thou art but as wave of his hand thou art brief as glitter of sand twixt tide and tide of his beach thou art less than a spark of his fire or a moment's mood of his soul thou art lost in the notes of the lips of his choir that chant the chant of the whole and that was from i think william watson ode in may so this is um an interesting may poem this is actually about poets who write about may this is by Lee Hunt, May and the Poets. There is May in books forever. May will part in Spencer never. May's in Milton, May's in Pryor, May's in Chaucer, Thompson, Dyer. May's in all the Italian books. She has old and modern nooks where she sleeps with nymphs and elves and happy places they call shelves, and will rise and dress your rooms 
with a drapery thick with blooms. Come ye rains, then if ye will, May's at home and with me still. But come rather thou good weather and find us in the fields together. So that was by uh, Lee Hunt and that was May and the Poets. My last May poem for Wine and Words Wednesday is by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And this is kind of a different um, take on May. And it is entitled, It is Not Always May. The sun is bright, the air is clear, the dancing, the darting swallows soar and sing. And from the stately elms I hear the bluebird prophesying spring. So blue yon winding river flows, it seems an outlet from the sky, where waiting till the west wind blows, the feigned clouds at anchor lie. All things are new, the buds, the leaves, the gilt, the elm tree's nodding crest, and even the nest beneath, beneath the eaves, there are no birds at last year's nest. All things rejoice in youth and love, the fullness of their first delight, and learn from the soft heavens above the melting tenderness of the night. Maiden that reads the simple rhyme, enjoy thy youth, it will not stay. Enjoy the fragrance of thy prime, oh, for it is not always May. Enjoy the spring of love and youth. To some good angel, leave the rest. For time will teach thee soon the truth. There are no birds in last year's nest. And that was by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, entitled the poem entitled, It Is Not Always May. So those are my May poems for Wine and Words Wednesday. Again, my name is Mary Bear Shannon. Thank you for watching and have a great week.